Hello, welcome to the National Art Museum where we will be your tour guides. I'm Cooper. And I'm Chloe. First, we will be looking at the Hagia Sophia, a famous temple or dome built during the Byzantine Empire. It is part of the early modern era and it was used as a church for the Eastern Orthodox. This is famous because it is considered the epitome of Byzantine architecture and is said to have changed the history of the empire. Here you can see how intricate the designs are and just how difficult this dome would be to build with their limited technology. The Hagia Sophia was finished in less than six years and although it is impressive, it led to serious problems later on. It is written by the writer Procopius that the builders had problems with the dome roof and that the structure almost collapsed during construction. Eventually, the dome was made to stand on its own, although it collapsed about two decades later. This architectural style impacts present architecture and buildings by introducing the dome to modern artists, and now many important buildings, such as the Capitol, use this technique. This is so influential and vital because without the idea created by Justinian, this style may not have been introduced until several years later. And even then, it might not have been used and taken advantage of quite as much due to its limited amount of time being utilized by past and current civilizations. It is also a very important religious symbol to present Eastern Orthodox Christians because it is referred to as the Church of Holy Wisdom. It was first constructed when Constantinople was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. It was built for Justinian, but during a revolt caused by unfair taxes, the church was burnt down. It was later rebuilt, still under Justinian's rule, and the layout of the building is quite interesting. The Hagia Sophia was built with two levels, the ground floor and a gallery above. The two levels are said to have been created due to class separation during church services. The gallery was usually for very high class figures who would sit during the service, such as the empress and emperor. Now we will be moving on to the 20th century, where we will see Picasso's art style referred to as Cubism. These abstract, unique paintings have an important meaning to the 20th century. Chloe, what is Cubism? I heard so much about it, but I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. Good question, Cooper. I completely forgot to mention it. The analytical cubism artistic movement is compared to the synthetic cubism movement. Analytical cubism analyzes the natural forms and reduces them to the geometric parts or figures on a two-dimensional picture. They are simply shapes that represent the natural world. However, Picasso took this artistic idea from a different angle and created his own unique kind of cubism. His cubism was a mixture of analytical cubism and abstract art. His picture didn't necessarily represent natural beings in a cubistic way, but took a turn and instead re represented his ideas and surroundings through an abstract form of cubism, which is only one of the many reasons why he was set apart from other artists. As you can see in the pictures, all of the paintings are formed using abstract shapes to convey the reality of the natural world. In one of the paintings, it shows how music also played a big part in that time period, due to the fact that the 20th century was an upcoming period of new technology and improved styles of art. The musical style referred to as jazz was introduced in the time period, and that is why Picasso has color from men playing instruments, because jazz was an upbeat style of music that brought overall joy and positivity, much like bright colors. Picasso's unique style of art influences modern artistic creations due to the introduction of a new artistic perspective, as opposed to the original cubistic ideas. He put a turn on it and introduced his own type of cubism, which has been used throughout years and years. His artistic influence has shaped and inspired many new and upcoming artists to not follow the standards and to create their own path. David Hockney, for example, an English painter who is well known for his painting of swimming pools, was highly influenced by Picasso's artwork, and that is what drove him to become more involved in his paintings. Moving along the art show, we have Queen Elizabeth I, The Ermine Portrait by Nicholas Hillard, made in 1583. During this time, there were great advances in science, finance, architecture, poetry, drama, and exploration. Portraits back then were used to flaunt a subject's wealth and power and status. The painting is important to history because we were able to visualize the wealth that flowed through the kingdom and its newest advancements. It is also a good representation of just how important wealth was to the people in this time period. If you had money, you were expected to show it. This is how the upper and lower classes were separated. Much like the Hagia Sophia, there is an obvious separation of class. It just had to be represented. In the portrait, you can see that there is an ermine on her lap. Ermines are a symbol of royalty. If you look closely, you can also see that the animal is wearing a gold crown around its neck. The crown symbolizes majesty and purity. Many items in the paintings have an underlining meaning. In her right hand, she is holding an olive branch to resemble peace. By her left hand, there is a sword on the table, which symbolizes justice she holds. Queen Elizabeth's dress holds an enormous amount of jewelry and gemstones to represent the wealth of her reign. The small things to us were much more important in this time period because each little representation held a much larger overall meaning. This painting has a continuous effect on the culture of England. We are able to learn how wealthy and powerful monarchs were in the Golden Age. 
and what new advancements were used and developed. We are also able to learn how separated these people were based on class, and it shows a change in the patriarchal society because a woman is presenting people with a painting representing her power and is surrounding herself with symbols that are representative of authority. Queen Elizabeth is still a respected figure to this day, and often she is referred to as influential because she turned England from a struggling country to a prosperous one. She was also very long-lasting, holding power for 44 years before she passed away. Giacomo Baia was an Italian painter and sculptor in the 1900s, and his father died at age 9. That pushed him to begin working in a lithography print shop, which led him to decide to start studying painting. This photo is an example of one of his abstract pieces, although usually his artwork is focused on contemporary French trends. His abstract painting is a very excellent representation of abstract art in that time period because it has shapes and bright colors. In the 1900s, abstract art was highly common because usually happy colors were used and people liked to express positivity. He was a large part of the Futurist movement, a movement that emphasized technology, youth, and speed. However, this movement also emphasized violence, which is represented by the color red that seems to be taking over this whole painting. These paintings, such as many others, were highly influential during the Futurist movement because they represented the reality that Bala was trying to portray. He wanted to show how these new social and technological transformations were positive and that they would be used in a productive manner. And in the end, they would bring good outcomes. This influences modern society in a way that may differ from other influences. This painting made a small difference in an overall very large movement, and although this painting did not make or break any final decisions, it took part in the change. The movement introduced many new ideas and those have lasted throughout years up until the present. One idea that was most influential was technology, which has continued to rapidly grow as time moves on. New technological ideas are being introduced every day and Baez painting is part of the reason for that. During the Italian Renaissance from 1511 to 1512, the Sistine Chapel was being built and a man named Michelangelo painted the ceiling with a series of frescoes that portrayed several biblical stories from the book of Genesis. The creation of Adam is one of the most famous sections of the chapel. As you can see in the painting, Adam on the left with God on the right illustrates God giving life to the first human. God is depicted as an elderly yet muscular man with gray hair. Instead of wearing royal and godlike garments, he wears only a light tunic which leaves much of his arms and legs exposed. One might say this is a much more intimate portrait of God because he is shown in a state that is not untouchable and remote from man, but one which is accessible to him. This is an important painting to the Renaissance era because of the new ideas that led to the enlightenment and scientific reason that started to get people to wonder about God and the human's relationship. In the painting, it looks as if God is about to give Adam life, which would explain the mutual desire of God and humanity of one another or if they are letting go of each other. Michelangelo could be asserting humanity's independence or separation from God, which would follow along with the Enlightenment ideas in the late 1700s. This painting influenced not only its own time period, but time periods after. It brought up the quest new question of God's divinity and how someone so unreachable and could be a factual and realistic idea. Although humanism was a new and widely believed concept during the Renaissance, there were still people who strongly believed in the church. This painting represented the immortal image of God and how intimate and loving the relationship can be with him, which could either influence people to join the church or it could make a negative impact and push people further and further away from religious influence.